Good morning, everybody. I want to talk about knit together in love. For I want you to know how great a struggle I have for you and for those at Laodicea and for all who have not seen my face, me face to face that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love, to reach all the riches of full assurance of understanding and the knowledge of God's mystery, which is Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. On later in the same chapter, let no one disqualify you, insisting on asceticism, Uh, Worship of angels, going on in detail about visions, puffed up without reason by his sensuous mind and not holding fast to the head from whom the whole body nourished and knit together through its joints and ligaments grows with a growth that is from God. Amen? Amen? God's aim... God's purpose, God's will for us in Appleton here in this hall this morning is that we be very, very close. That we be close, no, super close. And that's the, I'll just go ahead and tell you that's what I'm aiming to accomplish in the next five or ten minutes as I speak. Not just teach us to be in love with one another, but knitted together. In love. Super close. When describing the love of brothers and sisters in Christ, Peter says in 1 Peter 4, 8, he says, Brethren, love one another fervently. Be honest. Do we? Fervent is the idea of fiery, passionately, intensely. Well, no, I don't love you guys that much. (laughs) And the lesson is yours. No, God does not said love one another and left it there, but he says super love one another. We use this expression, by the way, in everything or other things, not everything, but in other things. For instance, I'll just say uh, we talk about a family. They're a close-knit family. You know you talk like that or have heard it spoken that way, and you don't wonder, knit? I don't knit. We understand the language, and the Lord says, use it in the Bible. I want you to be knit together in love. So I would hope we here at Appleton are a close-knit band of saints, a tightly-knit family of Christian brothers and sisters. Amen? Amen. I didn't hear enough. Amen? Amen. Okay, who didn't? No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Brethren, friends, this can be done. Don't even pass this off. I can see by your faces some are are thinking, it ain't going to happen. It isn't happening now and not going to happen in the future. Oh, 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 make it happen. The Bible doesn't say, hope you enjoy it happening without you contributing anything to it. Make it happen, people. David and Jonathan, you know who they are, right? As soon as he had finished speaking to Saul, that's Jonathan, Jonathan's father, the soul of Jonathan was what? Knit. Knit to the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. We could stop there. I'm not. But we could stop right there. And let's just preach about that for a while. Knitting souls together. Jonathan David. This is a close-knit congregation. I firmly believe that to be true. And so you might be thinking... What a vain exercise of bringing a 10-minute sermon about a topic we're already doing so excellent or well at. But I don't want you thinking that I think we're falling short in this, and that's why I'm preaching it. It's not. You just have to take my word on that. It's not. I'm not preaching it for that reason. I firmly believe we're a close-knit congregation. But, and I know you wish I wouldn't say but, but... We can thank you. I'm, who needs to preach? You got it right here. Not we can do better. We can increase. Well, that ain't in the Bible. Oh, yes, it is. Or I wouldn't bring it up. Yes, it is. Listen to the Holy Spirit spur on a close knit love 
of the Thessalonican congregation in the first book. The Bible says that God says, may the Lord make you increase. Oh, I gather it's not yet happening. Oh, it's happening, but may He make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all as we do for you. I don't know how many weeks, months, or years later, but it wasn't long. He wrote another book to them, and how does he word it then? We always ought to give thanks to God for you, brothers, as it is right. He's speaking to the same people. Because your faith is growing abundantly and... The love that I talked to you about in the first book I wished for you to increase in is what? It's increasing. So it can be done. It can be that you are loving one another and it can grow. It can increase. I love Brother George more now than when I first met him. I love Lynette more now than when I first, heard, than when I first met her. How about you? <clears throat> How about you? Amen. And every single other person in the group. Not solely these two, but for all. Well, well, tell them. Tell one another that you love them. Ah, my dad didn't bring me up to talk like that. Well, you can be the first one. I'm sorry your dad didn't, but you can be the one that begins the ball rolling. I'm going to start telling people that I love them. Or greet one another in a loving way. The Bible not only says greet one another with a holy kiss, but it says greet one another with a kiss of love. You can do this. Stay in touch with one another in love. Stir up one another to love and good works. Comfort one another. Agree with one another. That sounds like another Bible passage. Boy, yes. Finally, brothers, rejoice. Aim for restoration. Comfort one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. Brethren, this makes the Lord happy. In our class this morning, I know some weren't there, but if you were, you'll, uh, you're about to hear a repeat. We do things to make our fathers and mothers happy. We need to make our Heavenly Father happy. And one of the things, not the only, one of the things that makes our Father happy is this. But let me go back to the earthly parenting just for a second. Parents love to see their children getting along. They love to see them staying in touch. They love them spending time together. They love them communicating. They love to see them even hug one another, maybe when they make them. <laughs> now, hug your sister. Okay, but still, we love to see that. So does the Heavenly Father. Let's make God happy. Let's increase in our being closely knit together in love. Okay? Amen. Amen. Did you know what the, you, do you, maybe you do, but maybe a lot of you probably don't, because I understand you don't, you don't do things like I do by way of preparing a lesson. I understand that. But I was interested, what, what is the Greek word that is translated in, in English, knit? Maybe it's just me, but I was interested. I don't, I'm not an expert in Greek, but I am interested on occasion. What, what word was here originally penned by the uh, Apostle Paul with the Holy Spirit inspiring him to write it down, and it comes in English as knit. Vine's uh, Dictionary of Greek New Testament Words says it means compacted. Compact. Compacted. All right, let's go with that. We need to be compacted in love. <laughs> we need to be compacted. That's tight, man. That is tight. Real tight. Right? That's close-knit. Compacted in love. Have you ever loved someone so much that you just wanted to squeeze them to death? Oh! Squeezing them. Okay, you don't like the squeeze to death reference. How about tightly hug them real hard? <laughs> if that goes over better with you. <laughs> no, my dad never showed me that I hug men hard. <coughs> hug them like then to get started. You know we know this. And you know we love this. Let us do this with one another here. And I don't mean solely because it makes us feel good, although it does make us feel good. No, 
And I don't mean solely because it's nice, although it is nice, but because our Heavenly Father wills it to be so. Now concerning brotherly love, you have no need for anyone to write to you, write to you, for you yourselves have been taught by God to love one another. And that indeed is what you're doing to all the brothers throughout Macedonia. But we urge you, brothers, to do this more and more and more. <laughs>